Okay, so more important or the most important part of the MS Excel interface are these different menu tabs which you see here, the home, the insert, the page layout, formulas, etc. Within each menu tab, you have a cluster of commands and options. Basically, we can say options and sub-options. <clears throat> you can see that a similar type of options or sub-options are clustered and that's why we have this clustered within the menu tab. So you have, if I go to the home tab, for example, you have this font cluster, you have this alignment cluster, then you have this number cluster and so on and so forth. Okay, so <clears throat> now um, this menu button or this menu tabs at times, you know, consume a lot of space. So if you want to minimize or maximize, either you can use this button uh, just, just before the maximize and minimize button. So you can hide your ribbon or you can use the keyboard shortcut called Control and F1. So you see that if I press Control and F1 on my keyboard, this menu tab gets hidden and I can again toggle it by pressing Control F1. <coughs> right, so this is how I can play around with this menu tab. Just below the menu tab, we have two important um, functions. One is your name bar or the name box. So name box shows us the name or address of the active cell. So right now my active cell is E5 as you can see here. Okay, E here stands for the column and the F here stands for the row number. Right to the name box, we have this function bar or formula bar. So function bar, this um, this window we will uh, you know maybe we will learn later, or you can explore later. But this um, this function window helps us in analyzing or you know uh, pulling out the different types of functions which we have in the Excel, the different cluster of functions we have. Right. So you have financial functions, date and time related functions, statistical functions, etc. You can also call this window by using a keyboard shortcut called Shift F3, right? <clears throat> okay, so this function window helps us in inputting the or entering the formulas or editing the formulas or just displaying the formula what we have in our cell. So whatever I write in a particular cell, you can see that it gets displayed here. I can directly go to this formula bar and make an edit to it, right? <clears throat> Fine. Uh, so below this name box and the function bar, we have our work area this entire highlighted cell what you are seeing now, this is our work area. Um, so this work area basically consists of the matrix of a rows and column. Okay, so if I go just to the last uh, call, last row, you can see that we have some 10 lakh plus rows available in Excel. This is Excel 2010 and in the previous version you will see a slightly lesser number of rows and column. And if I go to the end of the column, okay, you have um, roughly around 16,000 plus number of columns as you can see here, 16384. Okay, so this is I guess more or less, you know, um, good enough for us to perform any calculations. This entire work area is divided into number of worksheets as you can see here. Okay, all these worksheets are named differently but by default Excel name them as sheet 1, sheet 2, sheet 3, etc. We can navigate to each of this worksheet either by directly clicking on this worksheet by using our mouse or we can also use the control and page down to go to the next tab, okay, or you can use control and page up to move back to the previous tab, okay. So we can navigate or toggle between different worksheets by using our control page up and page down formula, I mean keyboard shortcut. Okay, so um, that's that's one way of navigating to different worksheet or we can also use the uh, go to command button by using control G on our keyboard. So this is our go-to window. We can directly write the name of the cell or the worksheet wherein we need to go. Okay, so more on this control command, uh, go-to com command later. But right now, let's move on with the Excel interface and let's talk about the navigation part now. So I move on to the next tab. <coughs> Fine. So let's, uh, if we want to navigate between each of the cells in Excel, we will use the arrow key. So each of our keyboard has arrow key, the four arrow key, top, down, right, and left. So we can move or change the focus area of the cell by using our arrow key. If we want to select multiple cell, then we need to use the shift button. So keep pressing the shift button and then along with that use the arrow key. Okay, or I can use the mouse to select the area. Fine. So that's how we select different cells or a range of cells in Excel by using our shift and arrow keys. Okay. Now let's say how do I navigate from one cell to another without, um, so let's say for example here in this cell, I need to jump from cell E2 to I2, right, so which are the next consecutive 
uh, fill cell or cell with contains. So I use my control and the arrow key. So you see that I directly jump from cell E2 to I2 by using my control and the right arrow key. Similarly, I can use control and down arrow key to move to I6, then G6 by using control and left arrow, control and down arrow, and so on and so forth. So once I move to from one cell to another and navigate between the cells, I can use my control and the arrow key. And as the common logic would say, if I want to select all this area, I will use control shift on my keyboard and then use the arrow key. Right? So I can select multiple cells at the same time by using control shift and the arrow key or simply shift and the arrow key. Right? So this is how we navigate between the cells. Again, you will learn more of this as we perform various functions in Excel. But this is just the basic of the Excel which you should know. Now, before I move on to the most important concept in Excel, uh, which, which according to me is cell reference, this is the basic you should know. Uh, before I even move at that, I need to tell you one thing that why am I focusing again and again on this uh, keyboard shortcut is because um, I, I don't have any statistical figure to give you exact data, but there, is, there are many studies which say that using keyboards uh, instead of using mouse increases the efficiency by 10 times at least. So just imagine that a work which you are otherwise performing in one hour, you'll be able to perform in 5 to 10 minutes. Right? So this is definitely very, very helpful. So I move on to the next step to understand the function called cell reference. So cell reference simply states that um, which cell are we referring to. So as I say, right now, I can see in the name box that active cell is D2. Right? Okay, so let's understand this cell reference function. And okay, before I move on to the function, let me tell you the basics of this cell reference. So in Excel, whenever we write a formula, there are two types of cell referencing, which some of you might be already knowing. One is your relative cell referencing, and the other one is your absolute cell referencing. Excel by default always have relative cell referencing, which we'll see what we mean by that. And we will also see how to change our relative cell referencing to an absolute one. That, that is the focus of this particular exercise. Okay. So let's take an example and understand what do we mean by this cell referencing. So this is a small table wherein I have the profit before tax. Okay, those who are not from the finance industry and who are not aware with what is this PBT or profit before tax, just assume it's a normal profit on which the company has to pay tax at the rate of 30%. Right? So that's all we, we, we need to understand for this particular exercise. So we have the revenue given for different years starting from FY 2004 going up to FY 2013. Okay, so we have various profit given and we need to calculate what will be the tax amount paid on it if my tax rate is 30 percent, right? <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so let's write a simple formula. So first of all, how do we write a formula in Excel? We start with the equal to cell, uh, sorry, equal to button. So any formula which we want to write into the Excel, we start with the equal to. And then I can directly select the cell by clicking on that cell. Okay, so if uh, by clicking on the cell which has the required or the relevant content. So right now I, I want to select it C5, so I just clicked on C5. Now I want to multiply it with the text rate. So I can again either go and directly click on the text rate or I can use my arrow key to change my focus cell. Okay, so I can use my arrow key to navigate between the cells. And I press enter. Now if I press enter, okay, you see that the focus moves to the next cell. Okay. In case I want to still retain my focus on the same cell, I use control and enter. So you see that when I press control enter, my focus still remains on the same cell. Right? And now I need to copy this formula for all the remaining cell. So I can use this autofill option in the Excel. You see the square box at the end of a cell. Right? This is what we call autofill feature in Excel. So I can just double click and all the consecutive cells will get filled. Okay, we see that there is certain error which is showing in the formula. So let's understand what is this error and why the error is there. If I want to expand this formula, right? Right now I can just see the value, but if I want to see all the formulas in the cell, in Excel we have a feature by using called Control tilde. Now this tilde is a button just below your escape button in your keyboard, right? There is a uh, sign like this which you can see in your uh, keyboard uh, just below the escape button, right? So this is what we call tilde, T-I-L-D-E, right? So we use control and tilde and you see that the cell gets expanded to the formula rather than the value, 
right? So you can see all of the cells are showing me the formula right now. So let's understand what is the problem and why we are getting this error. So you can see that while the formula in my first cell is fine, which is C5 multiplied by G4, in the subsequent cell, okay, my cell reference gets changed from G4 to G5, G6, G7, G8, which is the which is where the problem is. This is what we call relative referencing in Excel, so that once I copied my formula and pasted it to a cell down, Excel also changed the reference of the cell to one cell down. So my C5 became C6 and my G4 became G5. Right? So this is what we call relative referencing. Now in this case, I want my cell G4 to remain constant. If I want to bring back my screen back to the normal without the expanded formula, I again use control and tilde. Okay? So in this cell, if I want to now change my relative referencing to absolute referencing, I use the dollar sign or I press F4 button. So I can select, I can place my cursor anywhere between G or 4, okay, and I press F4 button. Right? So the moment I press F4 button, you see that there is a dollar sign attached to the G4 cell. Okay? A dollar sign in front of 4 and a dollar sign in front of the G column. Right? So now, once I copy this formula, the reference of G4 will not change, but it will freeze that particular cell. The reference will now become constant. Let's see. So now if I press this, use this autofill option and double click this uh, small square box, box here. So you see that my cells, my consecutive cell gets filled with the same formula. And you can now see that my reference doesn't change and it freezes the formula to G4 every time. Right? So now I have changed my relative referencing to absolute referencing. I still retain the relative referencing of C5 because I want the cell to change each time for the profit of different years. Right? So this is what we call relative referencing and this is one of the very important features which we need to learn in the Excel. Right? I can also, instead of freezing the entire cell, okay, I'll move back to the normal view now. Instead of freezing the entire cell, I can also choose to freeze either the row number or the column number alone. How do I do that? I again press F4. Right? So you see that now the dollar sign is in front of only the row number 4. If I again press F4, the dollar sign is now shifted to column number G only. And if I want to remove the absolute referencing, I press F4 again. Right? So F4 is like a toggle button, so it changes from freezing the entire cell to freezing the row column and finally unfreezing the cell again. Right? So right now I want to freeze cell G4, so I'll press F4 again. Right? So this is what we call absolute and relative referencing in Excel. Any questions at this point of time? Fine. So we have one more exercise uh, for you which we can explore later. In this cell what I, uh, what we want basically is that on the, on this, um, on this uh, column, we have the prices of a commodity given to us, the different prices, and we have the volume given to us, right? So I want the revenue for each of this price and volume combination, right? So if I write a simple formula, that will be price into volume, right? But if I copy this formula and paste it across, okay, Excel will not give me the right answer. You see that I'm not getting every time volume into price. Right? In that case, I can use the relative referencing and can solve this problem. I just quickly do it. So here, in this formula, I need to freeze my row number 19, only row number 19 rather than the entire cell. And I also want to freeze my column number C. Right? And now if I copy paste this formula, Excel will give me the right answer. Right? So these are just some of the basic application of the cell referencing but the usage and application is much more than this. Fair enough. So if, if cell referencing is clear to us, we need to practice more on the cell referencing and definitely command this because this will be used more than often once you are working on the data henceforth. So rather than you know writing the formula or writing the formula in a manual manner, we can now use the absolute and relative referencing and can increase our efficiency multiple times. So if this is clear and there is no further question, I will move to the lookup function in Excel. 